Hi everyone, welcome to my Sherline studio. I'm Sybil Muschik. Behind the camera is Joshua Blanc. Today we're talking about reduction printing. I have in front of me a piece I did uh, a long time ago. The theme at the time was uh, places of power around the world and uh, so Easter Island was um, something I was doing. And this is a reduction print but of a woodcut. We're going to be working with um, the Presto foam and the gel plate, of course. But the process and the principle is the same. So you can see uh, some of the colors here that I used. is about three colors in here. And uh, in each section, as you're doing a color, you carve away the rest. And that's how you work progressively until you get a finished product. But first, I want to introduce you to proportional dividers. Now, in a previous episode, we talked about uh, site sizing. And that's where, uh, if you're doing a figure, you're, say, using the head as the proportion for how big everything else is. Well, there's a good tool that you can use, and it's called a proportional divider. And I have my little drawing in front of me here of something uh, we're going to be doing a reduction print of. But I need to redraw it so that I can get it on my Presto foam plate. So it's very small, as you can see, so we want to enlarge it. So we take the proportion, and I've, um, there's little gauges on here, and um, I've got it at two, I think. And uh, just make sure we'll tighten that. And we'll just see. So this adjusts according to what you're measuring. And this button here tells you how, uh, you know, whether it's two times or three times or so forth. So anyway, what we're going to be doing now is I'll measure and then we'll redraw on here. And I'm going to use my Presto plate just as a gauge here as to what the size is going to be that you're working with. So we'll trace that off. And I'm trying to keep the size pretty well the same, just uh, in different proportion to it. So okay, so let's start. and. Probably a good idea to do a bit of a grid where you're doing the thirds. So you sort of have an idea where things are. So the thirds on here, out there, just rough. This is just a little study. Um, as usual, I'm not really going for, you know, a finished work of art. It's a tutorial and you at home will take the time to do a really nice piece, right? <laughs> so let's start. I'm not gonna draw all of it. I'll probably just um, fudge it on there for the sake of time. We'll go for this circle and then we'll flip it around. And here's sort of where it's going. I'm just gauging and then mark it. And then we'll draw it. And I'm trying to also see, I could measure this part here from here to here. And then I could use the proportion from here to here. That's how big that circle is going to be. So you see how useful uh, this tool is. And probably I should have measured the height of it as well to be a nice circle. Okay, so that's our first circle. Okay, so then we'll measure the second circle and it overlaps about there, and it goes up about 
there. So we'll mark that. And you learn a lot about measurements. And obviously we have to adjust the circles somewhat. It's probably a little deeper. And, uh, and this one. And you can see it's from there to there, right? So. And I can measure uh, the proportion from here to there. And that will give me how much that how big that circle is going to be. So you know, just by eye, I was way off. So the re proportional dividers are, are a big help. Um, Alex Colville, uh, a wonderful Canadian artist who used to do horses and railroad tracks and things of his nature, a very realistic painter. He um, used the proportional dividers all the time. He did a lot of measuring. That was his wife always joked when he saw the rulers coming out. <laughs> he was on attack to do another painting. So, And this really helps. So give that a shot. So we'll just do the third one and then we'll go from there. It's a, I'm just doing it on a very simple uh, composition. Here's the third one and okay so where does it go? So about And again, I could measure from here to here. And we'll see how I did by eye. Um, okay, from there to there. Yes. <laughs> have to remember to turn these things around. Okay. And let's just do that again. From here to here. Okay. So it goes us from there to there. So here's my mark. Look at how far out I was. Okay. Anyway, you get the idea. And uh, that's how these things work. And they're pretty accurate. And of course, you have to use some judgment as well as to where things lie in this grid and measure accordingly. So having making this uh, three part grid is a good idea and um, it helps if you're doing uh, architectural things, uh, people as well, of course, so that you get the proportions of the face right, the bone structure and, and things of that nature. Right, okay, so from here on in, we're just going to do it free for all. <laughs> <laughs> so we have our Presto plate. I've done a little bit of a margin, just like I did there. And then uh, let's just do the, I've, um, I'm just using um, my 7B pencil because it has a lot of graphite and it actually won't mark the surface all that much. So we're going to do our triangle. And we'll do our circles. And that's probably all you need right now. Then uh, remember this little tool looking for this forever the other day. <laughs> oh, it disappeared on me. It's Lasting Impressions. Uh, it's a company, I guess. And it has these little, I don't know if you can see this or not, but it has these little ball things at the end. It's called a stylus. 
And uh, what it does is it creates an impression in your Presto foam. And, you know, this is where you can get creative. Um, I mean, it's, it's such a simple composition. So we, you know me, I like to mess with things, so. We'll see what we can do here. These first lines have to do uh, with a white outline because our paper is white. If I used a different color paper, then it would be whatever color the paper is. And I'm just freehanding. So let's do, let's just do some strange things here and see what happens. I know I can never leave well enough alone. <laughs> okay, and maybe some uh, squiggly lines in here. And as I put uh, color on, of course, uh, some of these pieces will disappear. And I, on here I have all the names of the colors ahead of time so I don't lose track of things. So let's start. The first uh, color is uh, number one and um, so that's yellow. So uh, I'm going to, I don't like the yellow very much in uh, our Amsterdam paints so um, orange is close enough. <laughs> I'm just going to roll this out. Now you could roll it out on a plate, but the first layer isn't so um, exacting. And if it has blobs and things, that could be just interesting. So. You can also add more details as you go. I'm just brayering off here. And we'll get our plexi plate out with our gel, 8 by 10 gel plate. Um, and we're just going to line it up at the top here and push down hard. Hopefully our plate stays. I've only put a little bit of glue on. And we'll be printing on um, cardstock. Because we have all these layers to do, it's just a good idea to use a heavier weight paper. You can certainly use printmaking paper like uh, Leaves BFK is a good, is a good one. And uh, when you're using printmaking paper, um, give it a bit of a spray with water and take a towel and just get to the point where it's not shiny anymore and then use it as such. Okay. So, yeah, you can see the impressions are pretty good. Okay. It's a good idea in between everything to spray it and wipe it down. It's, that's the only thing uh, that I don't really like very much is there's an awful lot of wasted uh, paper towel. Other than that, the process is interesting. I'm just going to make sure. Everything has to be reasonably clean for this process. So. 
and now we cut. Take your little plate and see these little circle things? We're just going to cut them out. Now this will take a moment. Uh, Josh will throw an interlude in here. <laughs> Or we'll speed it up. Uh, we'll do something video-ish. <laughs> Okay, as you can see, I've cut this out. Uh, this is, that was that uh, number two. And uh, now we're on to red. In this case, uh, we're gonna be a little more careful. So I'm gonna roll it out nicely ahead of time. And I've just got a little bit of sticky stuff on here. So, that, you know, when I'm rolling out the plate is uh, you know, staying level. And you work from uh, light to dark, always. Okay, so. Now, of course, you can do this uh, printing it directly onto paper or uh, whatever. But, you know, uh, we like to use the gel plate whenever we can. And uh, hopefully this will line up. If it doesn't, it will be interesting. Now, from the back, you'll be able to see how it lines up. Now, since this is the first difference, you see there's a bit of a difference in the registration, but it's okay. But from now on, we'll have to be a little bit more careful. <clears throat> yes. Okay, that's kind of interesting. So, but it's a good idea to mark it. Okay, let's see if we can do that. Get it back in the same place. All right, um, cleaning. Okay, so I've cleaned the plate, I've cleaned the brayer, and uh, we've um, taken this to the cutting area and uh, we're going to cut the next section out. Now, if you want to do pochoir, um, keep these pieces and then use them for uh, pochoir printing, where you print the individual little pieces and then they all fit together in the end. That's that method. And we've done a previous episode on pochoir printing. Okay. Now the colors will overlap and create a secondary color. So take colors that you know are going to uh, not make neutrals that are muddy looking. Okay, on to our phthalo blue. That's a good color. It seems to work well with some of the other colors without making mud. 
if you're worried about drying time, because uh, that happens, add a little bit of retarder to the paint. Okay, we're just going to roll around. And we've cut out, as you saw, that next piece. Try and apply the paint as evenly as possible. So that there's uh, not too many little spots and things. That tends to happen with this Presto foam. And lining it up in the same place. And now we're going to be a little bit more careful with registration. And I'm using the Beren, even though it's not paper, we're doing it too, just to make sure it's even. And getting all those little spots is so strange. Now, I just want to say that if you're doing an addition, we're only doing um, one piece, we could be doing it to uh, whatever uh, length your edition is going to be. That's called a limited edition print, a real limited edition print, not something that uh, some company has um, absconded with the um, information. And it's not a reproduction, it's a hand-pulled original print. Okay, and we should be able to see, line up the edges here nicely from the last print. There we go. I'm running uh, one right now of the cabin. Uh, if you remember in a previous episode, we did a little cabin down the lake. And I'm, we're not gonna do it for the video, but we'll do it for Instagram to do one of the layers and uh, to show you what the cabin looks like. And maybe later on in this video, I'll show you my progress. So here's what it looks like so far. And uh, like I said, the colors are very interesting together. And we just have the triangle to do. So then uh, we'll probably go to violet. That might be a nice set. We'll make the background really dark and this part. So, so now we have to cut out the triangle parts. So again, cleaning, <laughs> cleaning and more cleaning. <laughs> Well, now we're cutting the triangle out. Not much left of this by the time you get finished cutting everything. So when you're running your edition, um, make sure you have all your problems solved. Because if you don't, you can't go back because you've already cut that out. <laughs> I suppose you could glue it in or something, or if it was a wood cut, you could use wood filler. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Things can get really complicated. I'm just going to mix the uh, the red with the, the blue. We're going to get a sort of purple color. It'll be our darkest color. If you're worried that that middle will print, then uh, be sure and, you know, wipe that back. That will hedge our bets and make sure that this isn't going to print. 
seems to me some of this gel print printing is a lot to do with the dishes, doing the dishes. <laughs> I had a wonderful teacher, unfortunately. She's passed away. And that was what she said. Sometimes you're just doing the dishes. <laughs> of paper back. Now that would have been fun if we'd been able to run, you know, about three or four of these, but you get the idea. Um, do you remember the Punch and Judy shows, uh, you know, those um, uh, little puppet shows? Well, I grew up as a youngster in Germany uh, watching puppet shows. And this reminds me of that because uh, when I'm lining things up, you know, I can just hear people watching say, no, no, it's off this way and off that way. And that's what we used to say, you know, behind you or don't do that. You get really involved with puppet shows. And you can see purple in here. It's quite nice. A little bit on the dark side, but that's okay. I mean, we could run one more thing, um, cut it to where, um, you know, the margins are, and then maybe print uh, a white color or a lighter color and see what happens, because these are all being cut out. It's, you know, it's good. Okay, well, I think that about does it. I'm going to crop this and show it at the end and um, we will for Instagram we will film that uh, white piece that's the cabin and we'll take a quick break and I'll show you what I've been doing with that and uh, well and we'll see you in a flash. <laughs> So there you have it, uh, reduction printing uh, using the gel plate 101. <laughs> and uh, it turned out pretty good. Um, some of the spots are interesting. That's from uh, this Presto plate uh, doing strange things. I would have liked to have our purple section a little bit lighter, but it's all to the good. And it's quite dramatic, as you can see. We could have maybe put the lines a little deeper so the triangle would show up better. You know, there's all sorts of stuff you can do and uh, start simple and then go more complex. So that's that. And I just want to show you quick, um, this uh, is a reduction print using the gel plate, of course, uh, of our cabin that's down the lake here. And we're now at the white stage. I've cut the sides and this uh, red stuff out. And I'll just show you quickly a few of them. So, and of course, everything gets cropped at the end. So here's the white layers that I've done so far and more to come. And I'll do this for the Instagram because it's really fast on Instagram. <laughs> and this is the nicest one. Uh, and look at how dramatic the yellow is on, on there. Uh, this, it was actually yellow on a yellow uh, with a green layer and that comes with this vibrant yellow green. Okay, so that's it for today folks and thanks so much for watching. It's been a, a hoot, really has. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't mind the cutting so much but I really don't want to do it on uh, uh, wood anymore. It's too hard on me. So doing it uh, with these uh, styrofoam plates, whether they're soft or hard, is a nice way to go. So you might want to try this and use your gel plate uh, if you like, or do it directly, however you want to do it. But do it. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you again. Bye for now. <laughs>